What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the stream. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of live YouTube streams, so we're trying this out. Give people a chance to watch me do some, build some stuff live, which would be pretty fun. Feel free to ask questions. Yo, I see uh, you all in here. Adam, Riven, No Name, Simeon, who was the first comment. What's good? What's popping? How you doing? I haven't streamed live on YouTube, so I don't know if my audio is going to be shite or it's going to be fine. Um, leaving it up to you guys to let me know if my audio is delayed or whatever. Um, but yeah, so recently I had the pleasure of interviewing the Florida Foundation. Uh, this isn't this an ether, ether, uh, <laughs> an ether not level, maybe. Um, I had the pleasure of interviewing the Florida team. And they gave me kind of the rundown of Forda. Got a video coming on out on that soon, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, also kind of a summary video for those of you who don't like watching our long videos. Uh, but I did want to show you kind of what the process looks like of building one because it's, it's not very daunting at all. It's pretty easy. And as we move deeper into the world of Web3, monitoring becomes more and more important. Right, so I just had an interview with Jocelyn from Trail of Bits, Trust from Trust Security, Alejandro from Immunify, and then Tincher from the Red Guild. And they unanimously said, hey, we need better monitoring, monitoring solutions for our blockchain protocols and our blockchain projects. And we kind of suck at that right now. So we're going to build a little bot here. It's going to show us how to prevent flash loan attacks on our protocol. It's going to be very cool. Hopefully you will... Uh, in the future, be able to make money if you want to become a bot developer and build bots, which will be very fun. But we're going to show how quickly you can kind of build and deploy one. Uh, we're also going to show you how to do some testing and whatnot. And we're going to be using Python because I love me some Python. So before we jump in, are there any questions? Are there any questions? Great to catch you live as well. Thank you for being here. What's up, homie? Constitutional Connor. What a... What a badass name. So before we get started, any questions? But that is what we are doing today. We are building a FortiBot, which will be a lot of fun. And my computer's running super slow streaming to YouTube. Um, so this will be very interesting for sure. There might actually be questions coming in, but uh, maybe not. Because I don't know what the delay looks like. Oh, there's a pretty long delay, actually. But whatever. All right, let's go into it. Switching over. Let's look at some code stuff here. Huh? All right, so here's the four docs here. Python or J is better to learn before get into blockchain development. I actually personally think Python. But, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, it looks like there is a decent delay here, uh, which is fine. Uh, I think Python, but I think you can really just jump right into Solidity if you want. I think that that's totally cool. What is Forda? Great question. Let's actually start with that. So Forda is this protocol here. Oh, sweet Lord, Forda. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out how to... Uh, Forda network, please. I'm going to have to figure out how to not have my computer run at a snail's pace when I'm streaming this, because this is impossible to, to Google search while I do this. Anyways, um, yeah, real, real simple. Detect Web3 threats and anomalies in real time with machine learning. Uh, kind of a marketing thing here, to be honest. Um, it's really, it's, it's a network of nodes that run detection bots, right? And so if you think of Ethereum, Polygon, BNB, you know, all these chains, they all have these protocols on them. Uh, it's a network, um, it's a decentralized network we should have a network that monitors them as well. So you can kind of think of, uh, instead of having one person running one bot to monitor a protocol, you have a ton of nodes, or excuse me, a ton of servers running a ton of bots to make sure Web3 stays secure. So real-time monitoring, uh, but based kind of on a, a, uh, a commons perspective, right? So we get this economy of scale thing. Interesting protocol for sure. And like I said, we need more monitoring in Web3. So that's what Forda is, uh, and we're going to be building a bot. Uh, I'm going to have a video kind of summarizing a lot of this coming out soon, um, but this will be pretty cool because we'll get to see what a bot actually looks like here. So uh, we have the docs in front of us. Uh, we're going to be using uh, the SDK. 
We're going to be using the Python SDK. Uh, but to get started, there's a ton of prerequisites, which is a little bit annoying, but that's fine. Um, hopefully you can see this, but here's the how we get started with this MPX for the agent. Oh, excuse me, you guys can't see my screen. Let's sorry about that. Here are the, here are the docs. Um, we come over to quick start, right? Um, develop a bot with the SDK quick start. And we're going to do this thing right here. Uh, this MPX Forta agent latest init. And instead of TypeScript, we're going to be using uh, Python here. Dash dash Python, boom. And this is going to set up our project. Oh, that is uh, not where I wanted to do. Uh, but you, when we do this, it actually uh, grabs a key file. So this is kind of like my dummy key file. It doesn't really have any money in it. Um, but it, it, it does grab a key file, which I really like how everything is encrypted um, versus like a foundry or a hard hat. All your keys are in a .env, which kind of sucks. This has everything in, a, in an encrypted key file, which is really nice. I just realized that I'm on the wrong folder, though. So let me open this up. A correct folder. That looks better. If I delete this, am I going to lose my screen? No. Okay, cool. Boop. Boop. Okay, cool. Uh, but we see all this stuff on the left hand side here. So this is kind of so the for the bot starts off as a JavaScript uh, framework, a JavaScript tool, which is fine. You know, we had to install it with MPX. It's this is like basically like the for the init or the forge init of this. Uh, in here, we have node modules, obviously, for all the JavaScript stuff. We have source, which you can see is written in actually in Python here. Uh, and so we're going to be adjusting this Python um, to make it do what we want to do. Uh, Docker ignore because actually these bots get wrapped up into a Docker container. And these are how these four to nodes actually run these run these uh, run these bots, they run them in Docker, which is really nice, so that we can keep our protocols nice and safe and nice and secure. We have a git ignore, which is obviously git ignore, Docker file, Docker file. Uh, this is this, uh, this Forda config is a file that it's got a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to ignore it. Um, but it kind of um, defines, it's like the metadata of this bot, basically. License, whatever, JavaScript stuff, Python stuff, readme, which uh, we're going to change, and then all this stuff. Oh, and then by the way, the completed code for this is going to be here. This is what this is going to look like at the end. But yeah, we're going to walk through, you know, how we actually build this, how we think about building this, um, et cetera. So, so that's how we get started here. So uh, in here, in our source, we have this agent.py, and this is our, our important file here. So it, get, it starts with this handle transaction function. And basically what happens is when a Forda node runs this bot, every single transaction that happens, it's going to route through this handle transaction function, right? And you can see in this example here, it's it's doing a whole bunch of stuff. But um, at the end, it has this this finding that it emits says high tether transfer, and it emits this alert. So basically, if you are nervous about, you know, somebody sending a ton of tether, what you could do is you go to the Forda uh, app here, uh, you could scroll down to uh, monitor smart contracts. Uh, I have to sign in. That's annoying. Okay, sign in. This is my dummy account, but I'll put my password in off screen anyways. Okay. Great. That's fine. I don't care if you're going to steal my money anyways, because it's all fake money. Uh, switch to Polygon. Switch to Polygon. Okay, anyways, so if I wanted, you know, if I wanted to get some alerts on my smart contract, like, hey, high tether amount, or hey, uh, a crazy flash loan is in the mempool. You know, I could come here, I could go monitor smart contracts, I could paste the address that I want to monitor, paste how I want to get it delivered. Um, and then actually, once you do this, you, you get brought to a UI where you're also allowed to paste the bot ID so you can subscribe to specific bots. So you can almost think of it as like a, um, a marketplace of bot monitorings for Web3, which is very cool. I, I do look like Jeff Bezos 
with hair. Yes, that is uh, in a in a past life. I was Jeff Bezos, and then I grew hair and I went to CrossFit. Um, my password is actually password two, not password one. What's the horse icon? You know what? You don't just have like a horse icon in your uh, in your VS Code. Uh, no, it's a Huff the Bugger. Um, big Huff fan over here. Uh, all right, cool. No more questions. Great. I'll keep going. Cool. So that's what we're doing. So we're building a bot so that people in Web3 can be safer and more secure. They can subscribe to our bot and a network of nodes will run our bot. And there's some stuff with the fort token or whatever. But, you know, uh, I'll explain that in my upcoming video. Anyways. So uh, we're going to, uh, and there's, you know, you can also uh, initialize some stuff, bef you know, handle block, handle alert, blah, blah. We're going to delete everything in here. We're going to delete everything in here. We're going to start from absolute scratch, right? And then we're also going to delete everything in here. Goodbye. And actually, yeah, we're just going to start like this. We're going to say findings equals blank and boom. This is how we're going to start. So we're going to have these. Two files, agent.py, agent test.py. So uh, let's build this thing. So let's first define what we want to build. So we're going to say we want to build a bot that will trigger an alert when a flash loan um, attack happens. Uh, and then on, on what protocol? Or, or uh, not flash loan attack. Let's just say a flash loan happens. Um, and then we'll say like with, uh, with tether, I guess. Yeah. Happens, uh, with tether. So, um, one of the first things you want to do is say, okay, has, is there an example of a transaction, uh, where this has already happened? So we can go to etherscan and we can say, what would, what would be a transaction we would like to get alerted on? So what we can do. Uh, is we can come here and I actually already have uh, an example transaction of a flash loan where Tether is involved because I did some you know, sleuthing before this. Uh, and here's an example of, of a flash loan. There's a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff that goes on in here. Um, yeah, and one of the first things they do is they, they repay a big uh, loan. And if we scroll into the um the logs here we can look for flash loan and we can see there was a flash loan uh log emitted from this address and this is going to be the ave v3 pool right so there's a flash loan that happened on ave v3 let's say we are just terrified of flash loans happening on ave v3 on tether and we want to get notified of them right so boom we have an example transaction of that happened right and, and maybe maybe we don't want don't care about Tether. Maybe we only care about flash loans happening on our protocol. You know, we could easily swap out Tether for our protocol, but we're going to use uh, we're going to use Tether here for simplicity. So, when a flash loan happens with Tether, we're going to trigger it. Now, as it's written, uh, the Python stuff doesn't use type hints. Uh, that's super lame. I'm going to use type hints because that's what I like to do. So, uh, this tra transaction event here. Uh, this is going to be a, a certain type. And uh, when you work with um, this Forta bot, it comes with this uh, Forta agent, Forta agent SDK. So where is it? Tools, Python SDK. So it comes with this Forta agent SDK and all the stuff in here. You can read all the, the docs on this Forta agent SDK. But what we can do is we can say um, from Forda agent, and I've already uh, imported it into my, uh, I've already pip installed the Forda agent. Um, I don't love doing pip install, but uh, I usually like doing Python virtual environments, but I'm not doing that here. Actually, I've been using poetry a lot recently, if people are familiar with that, but whatever. Hi, Thunderous, welcome to the stream. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not doing that here. Anyways, so this, uh, this handle transaction, this transaction event is actually of type, um, <laughs> transaction event. So I'm going to do from Porta agent import transaction event. And this is transaction event of type, oops, transaction event of type transaction event dot transaction event like that, 
already going to have to zoom out a little bit here. So cool. So we're going to get this transaction event. And now that we've seen this, we can even like command click into this and we can see kind of all the different uh, properties of this class. And this is why type hinting is, is so dope, right? You can command click and you can look into that. Um, it's also dope for a bunch of other reasons. But so anyways, anytime a transaction happens, it's going to get passed over to here. So uh, we're and we need to return. This is how you do some returns in uh, Python here. We're gonna say we're gonna return a list of findings of type transaction event dot transaction event. So we're returning a list of these transaction events. And then we're gonna import the list typing as well. Like this. Okay, cool. So a list of transaction event dot transaction event. So this this findings list that we're going to initialize is going to be a exactly the type that we're going to return. Boom, love type painting in Python. Boom. Okay, cool. And then we can even do like a you know, a doc string if we wanted. Uh, uh, docs generate doc string, we could say uh, takes transaction returns a list of uh, findings list of findings that have a flash loan in it. Boom. Okay, cool. And then I'm gonna make a really shitty doc string. It's fine. Okay. So uh, first thing we should do. Okay, so let's let's see how uh, how do we build a bot that will trigger an alert when a flash loan happens with tether. Okay, well, the first thing we should do, and this is going to be every single transaction in the block, right? So the first thing we should probably do is we can say, Okay, well, is the Ave, you know, v3 address even in this transaction, right? Was anything interacting with the Ave v3? And um, flash loan, we go back to this example transaction, we can see the Ave v3 contract is here, we're going to do this bot for ETH mainnet, but there's uh, Forda works with a whole bunch of different networks. So we'll say Ave v3 address, equals, we'll paste that in. And so the, the first thing that we'll say here is we'll say, uh, if Ave v3 address not in, um, and this is where we do transaction event, it has a addresses uh, attribute, we'll just say return findings, right? So if Ave v3 is not in there, we'll just return. Now, um, it is case sensitive here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to convert these addresses to lowercase. So I'm going to say addresses lowered equals I'm gonna do some weird stuff key dot lower or key in transaction event dot addresses dot keys. Uh, this is some fancy Python stuff here. But basically, I'm just this is like a list of addresses in this transaction. And I'm just putting them all to lowercase, right? And uh, right like this, we can already uh, start to write some tests, right? And, and it's a good, good thing to actually us to write some tests here. Uh, we have a question. Is the alert triggered when the transaction is confirmed or when it appears in the mempool? Although a hacker will use a flash bot in most cases. You know what? That's a great question. Um, Forda, is the alert triggered when the transaction in the mempool or confirmed? I would hope it's when it's in the mempool. Uh, but that's a really good question here. You know, I was just thinking that before before I launched this, I was like, hmm, I wonder if it's I wonder which one it is. Right, we would ex we would hope it's it's while it's in the mempool, right? Not while it's Real time detecting threats. Well, uh, some bots monitor generic threats. I think it, I think it's when they're confirmed in the block. Yeah, I think it's when because because when you so when you do this, actually you can run. Oops. You can run npm uh, run start. I think, and this will connect. So it just said fetching block this block. You know, let's delete this. 
and let's see if we go to EtherScan. I think it's I think it's live. So if we look up this block, yeah, just finalized 18 seconds ago. So I, th I think it's live. I think it's blocks that have been finalized. Great question. Uh, I would I'm probably gonna ask that on Stack Exchange ETH uh, and then ask the Florida team later. That's a great question. Um, so this is this is like all right, you've you've been hacked. It's time to do get into a war room and uh, figure out how to prevent this. So you've lowered the case of the addresses, but not the constant Ave. Ah, uh, yes, good good call. Thought Laura, thank you. Good point. All right, cool. So now we have this. We can actually start writing some tests uh, just to make sure that even this part is working correctly. So uh, we're going to do some class based tests. We're going to say class test flash loan detector. And we're going to make a, a def test turns empty if Ave, if no Ave contract. We'll say self here. And then we'll say, uh, we'll, we're going to make some mocks in here. Um, uh, we're actually, we'll do pass for now. Yeah, we're gonna have to make a mock transaction. So we're gonna say from, uh, so first off, we're gonna say from unit test.mock import mock from unit test import mock. Okay. And then we're gonna have to say we're gonna have to do this from Forda agent import create transaction event. So in the docs here, the Python SDK, there's a create transaction event uh, function that we can use. A function, a utility function for writing tests, you can use create transaction event to easily generate a mock transaction event object. So uh, we're going to pass kind of this mock transaction event through and um, uh, make it uh, show that it's going to return zero because no findings because obviously not in there. Yes. How are we doing? Are we following me so far? We're following? We're following along? How are we doing? Great questions. Legendary questions. Bear Hunter. Mm. A part of me thinks I should have put the latency on this a little lower. It looks like there's like a 20 second delay, which is fine. It's fine. I will see your questions, but you will have to wait 30 to 60 seconds to see them. Uh, no, this is not beer. This is a spin drift. Um, not sponsored. Uh, they're a, they're a Boston based it's like sparkling water, basically, uh, Boston based sparkling water. Um, if y'all should mail them and tell them to sponsor me, uh, although that will never happen because they don't give a shit about smart contract deaths. So, <laughs> um, okay, let's go back. All right, cool. Um, great. We're following with me. Awesome. So we're going to create a mock here. And this is going to be uh, a mock transaction. So I'm going to make it up here, which is kind of shitty best practice, but it's fine. Mock TX event equals, oh, this is actually going to be of type transaction event, transaction event. And we got to import this as well uh, from Forta agent import or Forta agent dot transaction event, import transaction event, uh, equals uh, create transaction event. And this is going to be um, and so uh, I've done a lot of playing around with this to get kind of like what a transaction event looks like in the Python SDK. And it's it's basically like a dictionary uh, where it has a, a, a bunch of keys, I'm just gonna do a subset of them. But one of them is transaction, uh, where it has a hash, I'm just gonna do like this for now. It's a mock doesn't matter. Um, and then it also has a um, oops, transaction. Yep. And then it also has a an addresses where it has like a it's like a this weird dictionary of addresses. And it just says like true next to it. Um, 
I'm going to say true. So this is kind of like what a minimalist transaction event looks like. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in here, like, like logs and gas and blah, 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 and all that stuff. But um, we only need this addresses thing here uh, to make sure that the uh, Ave address isn't in here, right? Okay, cool. Mock TX event. Uh, and then what we can do... Um, we can also say mock uh, tx event dot filter log equals mock. So there's this filter log function, and we're just going to say uh, we're just going to be we're just going to mock it. We we're not even really going to use it, so it doesn't really even matter. But um, for, if you want to build your own bot, this is kind of like what you'll see a lot in the documentation. But in any case, so we're going to say okay, findings is going to be of type. Uh, as you know, it's going to be a list. Oh, thanks, chat GPT or um, Copilot. And let's import that as well. It's going to be a list equals handle transaction of the mox TX event. And of course, we need to grab our handle transaction from uh, our agent here. So at the top, from agent, import handle transaction because we want to test this function that we're building right here. So great. So we're gonna say findings is this. Uh, and since our mock transaction here has does not have the Ave address in it, it should return blank. So very easily we can do then we can say uh, assert length of the findings, findings equals equals zero, right? Pull this up. Keep deleting it by accident. We just run PyTest. Great, and it passed. Okay, cool. Nice. And then uh, the way that we will actually test this, um, that, that transaction from before, is we'll do npm run tx, and then paste that transaction in. Uh, I have it copied over here. Uh, it's going to return false for now, obviously, zero transactions. But uh, by the end, this will return to true. And what's kind of cool is that actually, this is actually uh, the Forda network comes built in with an RPC URL. Um, there's like this Cloudflare RPC that it's using. If you want in this Forda config, uh, where is it? In this Forda config, you can define your own like RPC, but it's using kind of like a built-in one for now, which I thought was pretty cool. So you get to make free RPC API calls. Um, so that's kind of nice. All right, cool, some questions here. Um, by the way, how did you create the frog avatar? It's cute. A awesome member of the community, uh, made that. So that was, that was awesome. Yeah. They shout out to, uh, shout out to them. Ford is a detection service of web three. Me thinks correct. What is the functionality of this Ford bot? It is to alert us when a flash loan happens on the tether token. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Should I learn how to build this? If I'm learning blockchain development, will it be of any use to be? Uh, later on, this is definitely more advanced. This is definitely more advanced. The functionality is to notice or maybe prevent threatening transactions. Correct. I haven't looked at the end code, so we'll see what it become. Is Web3 security specific? Um, but more people should know how to do this stuff, to be honest, guys. You know, more, more people should know how to do this stuff. Um, this is important. You know, this is good stuff. Anyways, so. Test is passing. Things are looking good. Excellent. Let's keep going. Cool. What's next? Um... Great. So we have, we found out if the Aave v3 address is even in this list of addresses, I guess we should make another test to say like, hey, is the address in there? But you know, we're going to skip that for now. What do we need next? Well, we should check to see if a flash loan topic is omitted, right? In order for us to make sure that like, like there's an Aave flash loan in there, we should check, hey, a flash loan event was omitted from the Aave protocol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say flash loan events. Um, equals here, and this is this is again going to be of this type. Excuse me, that's not going to be of this type. It's going to be of, of logging type. I'm going to leave it like this for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to say for each log in transaction event dot logs, and this is where we could use that filter log function I was talking about earlier. But I, I feel like it's it's a little bit easier just to do it like this. So each one of these transaction event has this 
this logs parameter. And uh, this is in here, if we go up to in the docs here, uh, you know, the transaction event uh, stuff is in here. And we can see that there's a, a log a list of log objects with the following fields. So that's how we're, we're getting this here. For each log and transaction event dot logs. Uh, and in here, we see there's a list of topics as well. So we're gonna say for each topic in log topics. Um, we're gonna find the the flash loan topic in here. So we're gonna say if topic dot lower equals, you know, whatever the flash loan topic is, will append a oh, cool flash loans out append log. Now the question is, hey, how do we get the the flash loan topic? Well, well, my my friend, well, my my dear, dear friend, uh, what we can do is we can use uh, Foundry's cast. So if you have cast installed, uh, you can do it. There's a couple different functions in here. I believe there's like an event or a log in here, but I'm just going to use Kachek uh, because uh, in order to get the topic. Uh, so actually, let me let me explain this a little bit more here. Or or maybe I won't explain this at all. Um, just kidding, I will explain this. If we have a transaction, we have a log here, and we go to uh, flash loan, we have this, uh, we have this log here, the first topic is actually going to be the hash of all of this stuff. So it's going to be kind of this unique hash of the, uh, the function signature of the event, if you will. And so this topic is this stuff hashed. So uh, flash loan takes an address, an address, an address, unit 56, unit 8, unit 56, unit 16. So what we can do is we can say cast kit check. And then we do that exact stuff in here. Um, we'll say flash loan address, 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 you went to 56. Uh, you went eight, you went to 56, you went 16, like this. And we'll get the topic for a flash loan. Uh, and we if we copy paste that here, we do indeed see that the same thing. So this topic, topic zero is always this kachak of all this event stuff up here, right? So this is the flash loan topic. So we can say flash loan topic, topic equals paste that in here. And I'm going to do dot lower again, just so that I always have it lowered. So we're going to say, okay, if topic dot lower equals flash on topic flash loans uh, events dot append the log. So we're just gonna have this list of logs that have flash loan uh, topics in there. Cool. And then after we do this loop, uh, we're just gonna say if the length of flash load events is uh, equal to zero, we're just going to return findings, right? Because if we didn't find any any flash loans, we're we're good, we don't care. All right, flipping over to questions here. Amazing questions. Love seeing questions. I'm gonna lower my desk a little bit. You guys like the purple in the background? I'm trying to get a swagtastic background. Um, scrolling up here. Oh, I should have I should do like, can I do can I do this? Oh, there's nothing here. Let me do Um, this? Yeah, okay. And then I should put myself in here. Oh, I messed it up. Oh, hi. Whatever, we're just gonna look right at the questions. Uh, okay. Um, Patrick, I've been studying for months. I still know the context. Why frogs? I like frogs. That's pretty much it. <laughs> if you're asking that question, you're probably not at the level, uh, but neither am I. Why Python though? Come on, man. Why, why you gotta, why you gotta why Python me? Why, why you gotta do that? Python is dank. 
Python is goaded. Yeah, you're right. I will research more before jumping out of this one. Okay, cool. Def of thought here is the main address is array, a concatenated version uh, of all the logs, addresses list. Uh, yes. Um, no. Uh -huh. Yes. So it's all, it's the list of addresses the transaction has interacted with. So not necessarily a list of uh, the logs addresses. It's a list of um, uh, addresses the transaction worked with. Never mind, I forgot to pass the transaction from the list, not a, not a list of transactions from the block, right? Yeah, it's it's passed a transaction from the list, correct. Not a list, yes. So the, the handle transaction handles one single transaction. So this addresses is like a list of addresses associated with the transaction. Now do Foundry 9 for the course wall. <laughs> there, there, uh, some guy made a, um, uh, a Git discussion, a GitHub discussion with all this stuff in there, which is pretty cool. Yeah, purple equals royalty. That's what's up. Always spike tasks like hell yeah. How many times do you train bench press a week? You know what? So I do CrossFit. We we really only do bench like I want to say like once every every two weeks, man. Like it's it's not enough. My my um my girlfriend actually gets kind of mad because she thinks that uh we don't train bench nearly enough. And and she's probably right. She's probably right. Um my bench my bench max right now is probably only like 355 or something like that. It should be a lot higher. Anyways, let's go back. Let's go back. And I just deleted, I just closed the, uh, okay, there we go. I need to pop out the chat. Okay, cool. Anyways, here we go. Uh, where were we? Okay, cool. So we have that. Uh, let's write another test for it because you, you know we're trying to test this stuff. Uh, let's do a little def test returns empty if new flash loan events self and we'll say um, mock dx event dot addresses so this is where we can just like do whatever we want with the addresses equals we will add in the avv3 address which we need to import from the agent avv3 address so we'll say obv3 address like this, true. And then we'll say uh, findings just like this. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, uh, Get a copilot and then we'll do that. Now we should be able to, oops, video shell. I keep deleting this. Now we can do PyTest. These both should pass. Bada bing, we're killing it right now. We are on fire. Guys, absolute fire. We have been trying to prevent and go after flash loans, but shouldn't we dissect flash loans and know the innings, how it's being made and, and all about flash loans? So I did a flash loans video, uh, I want to say like two years ago, almost three years ago at this point. Um, I mean, I know how flash loans is. It sounds like, it sounds like you all would like more flash loan content. Uh, maybe that's what I got to do. You got to do live streamers more often. Nothing better than learning live from the man and stuff. Oh, thanks guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, I will, uh, they're, they're hard to do, to be honest. <laughs> they're hard to do, to be honest, because it's, um, yeah, they're, 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 they're just hard to do. Cause I, I got to find time to, to spend an hour to, to just like go over stuff that I've already learned. I, and I, I like polishing them into a video. I feel like I, I don't get to put the polish, right. Cause it's kind of like raw here. I'm like, just like talking, uh, anyways. Okay. So uh, tests are passing stuff looks good. Oh, wait, did I finish this test? Yeah. Yeah. I finished that test. Okay, cool. Great. Yeah. I feel like I don't get the polish. I feel like that's a big deal. I, I like the polish, but, uh, I, I hear what you're saying. But okay, so we have uh, all the stuff in this array here. And if this array is greater than zero, it means we found one, right? We found something. Um, now we should do one more thing. We should check that a flash loan has happened on a protocol that we are interested in. So up at the top, I'm gonna make another uh, variable called interesting protocols. And this is gonna be a list. Um, uh, and it's just going to have one, uh, one address in it. So I'm going to say protocol equals, and then I'm going to cheat a little bit. And I know I'm not doing type hints for these, but that's fine. Uh, this is the tether address here. 
So an Etherscan, paste that in. This is the USDT stable coin. So we're looking for flash loans with USDT. And so what I want to do now that we have this list of flash loans, we're going to check it, uh, check to see if this list of flash loans includes Tether. So we're going to say for each address in uh, interesting protocols, which right now we only have one, we're going to say if address in um, uh, if the address is in transaction event uh, right here in addresses lowered. We're going to do this findings.append. And this is where we put uh, our finding data. So this Forta agent also has this thing called finding. We can uh, command click into this and it's got a ton of ton of stuff in here. Right? Uh, I believe the Forta docs finding. Yep. This is kind of like the important thing. This is what the bots are looking for. They're looking for this finding thing. And so it's a finding object and it needs a name, a description, an alert ID, um, protocol, and there's a whole bunch of uh, optional stuff uh, along with the required. For our severity, we're going to do low just because, um, it, it, you know, we're just looking for flash loans. We're not looking at like, hey, uh, you know, people have lost a ton of money. Um, severity is going to be low, but it's going to be suspicious, right? It's a, sp a suspicious flash loan has happened. Um, maybe somebody should look into it, right? We want to get alerted. We want to be able to do something to react. So we're going to say finding.append, finding. And we're going to add all that stuff in here. So it needs a name. We're going to say like potent, oops, potential flash loan attack, comma. We're going to say uh, description is going to be uh, we're gonna do an F string here, flash loan detected uh, with hash, and then we'll just do um, transaction event dot hash like this. We'll say uh, the alert ID. Alert ID is gonna be uh, called four to five, you know. We can really do whatever we want to do there. Uh, protocol is going to be Ave. We will say type is going to be uh, finding type. So there's this finding type this, that the Florida agent has as well. Finding type dot suspicious. Uh, severity is going to be finding severity uh, dot, we're gonna say low, and there's, we have to import this as well. And then we can do some metadata, which uh, I'm just gonna ignore for now, but boom. So we append it, and then we just return that list of findings. So now we can actually write a test where this does return a list. So we'll say def test returns finding in a flash loan self. And now we'll say, um, we'll do some of this other stuff. So I'm going to copy this mock text event dot addresses of addresses true. We're also going to say uh, protocol true, and we're gonna have to import the protocol from our agent. Um, now we're going to say, uh, now we have to, uh, so, so now, uh, this will pass, right? We also have to put the flash on topic in this mock transaction. So we're going to say mock TX event dot logs, because it's a mock, we can do whatever we want with it. Pretty much. Uh, we're going to say topics. Uh, and this is where we're going to add that. We're going to import in the flash loan topic. Oops. Topics flash loan topic. Um, address on this is going to be the Ave V3 address. Oops. Cool. 
Same thing. Findings. Boom. Handle transaction. Assert the len of findings equals one. So let's try this out. Pi test. It's like, oh, I need a description. And this is why we run tests. Just dev script description. Let's try again. Bada bing, bada boom. So this was actually super annoying to uh, to test myself um, before. Uh, what I was doing was I was putting basically like print statements in here because what you what happens is if you put like a print, you know, hi, uh, and we run that npm uh, that npm command that I was showing you guys before. I'm just going to copy paste it. npm run tx. It'll do this, and we should get a finding now, which we do, right? Because this is a transaction that does have it, which is awesome. Potential flash loan attack. Um, oh, it did print out high. What the heck? Oh, maybe maybe it just works now. What, what's up with that? Because before I was having a hard time doing print statements, but uh, maybe I'm just clueless. Let's try this again. No, nope. okay, print statements work great. Okay, I take it back, cool. So these are all the print statements. Um, so if you need a, a hand debugging, uh, do it like that. I, I found it very helpful to do like, uh, so I'm a big fan of breakpoints. So, um, but, oh, breakpoints, that, that was the issue. Breakpoints don't work. Um, but doing print statements like this, I found it very helpful to like use on a real transaction, right? Because then you could also print out, you know, the whole transaction event, although, this isn't going to be helpful because it's just going to be like, hey, transaction event object. Haha, -ha, you got a transaction event object. Nobody cares. Uh, yeah, for the transaction event object, which is like, ugh, just give me the whole thing, right? But we can do transaction event dot logs. See what it does. A print statement there. Yeah, still really annoying. It's just a whole bunch of it's a it's a list of the logs, which is great, but they're all just like four to agent, blah, blah, blah. You have to like keep doing print statements. But uh, that's a way to actually debug this is by running this on a real transaction, uh, seeing what you'd expect to get. And again, it's using kind of like a built in custom RPC here. So we have our bot um, working and we actually just tested it against a real transaction, right? So boom. Uh, oops. We run this. It says, hey, um, it runs a bot. This is the exact alert that somebody would get. Hey, potential flash loan attack, flash loan detected with hash, blah, blah, blah. Like, go check it out, right? It's a suspicious transaction. Uh, so we've built the bot, and now we're going to deploy it to the network. So let me, uh, let's, let's pull up some questions before we, uh, before we do that. Um, let's do cooler junk. Yeah, flash loans are not for the smooth brains. Tests are great. Yeah, right. I think tests actually make you write code faster because you know you're, you have higher assurance your code works as intended, uh, which I really like. Remember that multi-million dollar flash loan where the guy made like five bucks? Low Mao, that happens unfortunately a lot. Sorry, there are unique Python library imports here. Uh, yes, so we do some Python uh, imports from this Forda agent. Um, but other than that, this is like real standard Python. Um, yeah. Uh, when we run npm, it like wraps our, uh, if we go to this package.json, when we run this npm start, um, we run, we kind of like basically like wrap it with this uh, ugly JavaScript thing, which like ex executes our, um, our Forda. So it does Forda agent run, um, uh, which, which runs our Python agent, which is really annoying. Sorry, there are the, uh, no, I just answered that. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. Description, <laughs> you rock. You also suck at spelling. Uh, what is Fortabot? Uh, great question. It, it helps. It's a network to do monitoring in Web3. The Web3 and the total internet industry are endless. Yes, there's a lot of knowledge. Yes, and Wasm will bring more. Yes, Wasm's dope. Bro, just, bro, even just counting is endless. <laughs> Very true. Very true. What can we do with such a bot? Mev, Arb? No, you can prevent Mev and Arb, or hopefully. Uh, test slow me down, lol. They should speed you up. Uh, you'll get better, don't worry. Uh, Patrick, watch your original 16 hours. Yes! Yes! Holy shit, Forrest. Let's go, dude. Can I put this as a testimonial? Like, 
think that's what's up. Uh, I'm going to screenshot this. Thank you. Um, are we using LLMs here? No, we're not using LLMs. Okay, cool. In any case, so we have all that stuff done. Huzzah! Uh, next, what we want to do is... Yeah, Forrest. I'm glad you showed up. That's what's up, Forrest. On this... Let me let me do a quick flip. Give you, give you all a break. So are we with me so far? So we built this bot. All it's doing is looking for flash loans. Kind of lame. A little bit lame. But, you know, maybe your protocol is incredibly sensitive to flash loans. And you want to know anytime a flash loan interacts with the protocol. Boom. Now you know. We could make this probably more interesting where we, like, detect if any balances have changed. Right? Uh, or, like, pass a significant margin. That might be more interesting. Like, maybe if uh, you have a protocol that's working with ETH, right? You say, hey, I want to look for flash loans where the my ETH balance changed more than, you know, 10 ETH. Right. Maybe that's a more interesting bot. You know, obviously that would be easy enough to add to this bot. But anyways, I uh, hope you're all doing great. It is 1140 p.m. where I am and I'm probably going to go to bed after this. But I felt a surge of inspiration to do this stream. So um, glad you're all with me here tonight. Glad you're all with me here. My girlfriend's asleep downstairs, so I'm being kind of loud, but hopefully not that loud. All right, let's go back. All right, so what we want to do, we don't want to run a scan node. We don't want to do any of this crap. What we want to do is we want to get our bot so other bots can do this, this bad Larry stuff, okay? So what we can do is, uh, no, not here. We want to go to the Explorer. Uh, Explore alerts? Yeah, we want to go to the Explorer. We want to get our bot up here. If we look at recent bots, um... Our bot is actually already here. And uh, I think I put the description of something kind of silly. Afford a bot to smell flash loans. Yep. Afford a bot to smell flash loans on, um, on, uh, on Tether. And you can see this is enabled. I actually put up a hundred fort to stake on this, which was like, I don't know, $10 or something. Uh, and people can subscribe to this bot if they want. And so there are some nodes, some node data on it. Um, it hasn't sent any alerts, which makes sense. Nobody's using Tether, I guess. Um, but in any case, all we'd have to do to publish this, I, I, I don't want to republish it because I've already kind of published it. That's kind of annoying. Uh, is we would just run, and here there's this publish. Uh, we would do npm run publish. And what this would do is it would grab your key store value um, that automatically set up for you and you would make a transaction on uh, Polygon so you'd, you would need some Matic in your transaction and then you get an output that looks like this and I, I'm not actually going to do it and I feel bad that I'm not actually going to do it. You get an output that looks like this. Successfully added agent ID, blah, 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 with manifest, blah, blah, blah. So it basically would wrap up our Python agent into a Docker container, add it to the four to Docker uh, containers and uh, put it to the Docker Hub so that people could download it. But again, if you wanted to actually ship this, you would do npm run publish, uh, and then you would need to fund your, your key with, uh, with, uh, with Matic. And then when you do that, it'll show up on this Explorer here. It won't be enabled, it'll be disabled. Um, and then all you have to do is, there's like a, a little button you can click you say stake, stake 100 for it, and then after a few seconds, it'll be enabled. So I'm not showing that part because um, maybe it's less interesting. If you guys want me to, uh, I, I feel bad like having two, two bots on the actual network do the same thing. Um, if you all want to see me do it now, I can do it. Um, but in the video that I'm going to release in the future, uh, I will show kind of that process. Um, it's going to be a lot quicker because I'm just going to be like, and then you, you type this command and you click this button and boom, and you're good. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and then it'll show up on here. And, uh, this is kind of like one of my dummy addresses, um, uh, that I used, but, uh, that's pretty much the whole process. And then that now people can subscribe to this bot, like I said, and, uh, we can help make web three a little bit safer. 
So that's pretty much it for the stream, y'all. Any questions about anything? Anything at all? Anything at all here? And then, uh, then we'll jump off. I'll go to bed. To conclude, how are you feeling with Kodox? I feel great. Very excited for all the people who've showed up to do audits there. Um, really phenomenal turnout. I'm excited to get more projects on it. Um, and we're excited. Yeah, more, uh, more protocols. Looking for competitive audits. We are definitely the cheapest competitive audit out there right now because we're getting ramped up. Um, but we have, but there's a huge, huge amount of auditors. So if you're a protocol looking for the best bang for your, well, not even the best bang for your, potentially the best competitive audit you could you could possibly ask for the cheapest, definitely hit up Codox because uh, there's already over a thousand people signed up, which is awesome. Uh, we just got started, so we're our, uh, we're just. All, all the audits so far have just been like, great, protocol, put up the prize pool. We're not going to charge anything. All the other uh, competitive audits are charging stuff right now. Uh, we will charge something at some point, um, but we're not right now. So yeah, if you're a protocol looking for competitive audit, definitely hit up Code Hawks. Definitely hit up Code Hawks. And then we have some dope stuff coming down the pipeline uh, for auditors who are who are joining there and they want to kickstart their, uh, their careers. Um, just looking to make Web3 safer. Uh, nice same time zone here. Thanks for content. Awesome. Awesome. Glad, uh, thank you for being in the best time zone. <laughs> what is that? What does that mean? Man, I'm really looking forward to the ultimate cybersecurity machine course. You should be. Um, Patrick, did you think, uh, you'd be an entrepreneur when you were a young sapling? I, I wanted to, I told my mom I wanted to, uh, drive an ice cream truck so I could eat free ice cream. So I, I, I guess, yes, I, I guess, yes. How many pushups can you do till exhaustion? I have no idea. Um, wanted to know what this bot all about. Uh, I just joined here. You will have to rewatch. I am sorry because I'm not going to re-explain everything. <laughs> You'll have to rewatch, uh, or just, or just watch the beginning. We explained the beginning. Um, uh, same here. I'm making things safer, working towards some goals. Well, uh, well, ice cream truck. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, well, thank you all so much for joining. Uh, really appreciate you all joining. Hopefully you learned a little bit. Uh, hopefully you learned a little bit of Python. Uh, we, we as a community need to get better at monitoring. We need more monitoring tools. When you deploy your protocols, you should have a monitoring strategy in place before you deploy. Okay. Uh, you should be used to getting in a war room and dealing with those. So uh, thank you all for joining. Um, <laughs> I'm still reading your comments. You're all hilarious. Thank you all for joining and have a wonderful, wonderful 